Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new Your Old Droog record, It Wasn't Even Close. Your Old Droog is an elusive lyricist based out of New York who was once thought to actually be Nas, putting out music anonymously when his breakthrough EP dropped a while ago. But of course, we've since learned that is not the case, and now he is on his third full-length album, which is his first in, in a couple of years. And they were a few very silent years. In fact, the silence in between this record and his last full-length record was kind of deafening and even concerning because I would hate to see this man's output disappear. Because if we look at the momentum and the buzz surrounding Droog at this point in his career, it is much different and a lot less intense than it was when he initially broke onto the scene, which the way that it happened was kind of a blessing and a curse. Sure, he got a lot of attention right out of the gate, but also what came with that were some weird expectations that almost no other new artist has on them. On top of it, while Droog's entire discography up until this point has been pretty solid, there's been little to no effort to build upon the very vintage and specific brand of lyrical hip-hop that he pulls so heavily from. On this newest record over here, there is a bit of a more abstract and experimental change of pace, even though voices like Nas and uh, Big L and even the game still have a pretty profound influence on Droog's sound. No doubt MF Doom as well, as he appears on this project, and also Droog habitually raps about himself in the third person. He's not shy about that. Almost as if he's commenting on his own actions or character like a narrator. But again, I see Droog is embracing a slightly different mood on this project, as a lot of the instrumentals on this record put him in league with a lot of his New York cohorts who are rapping over similarly spacey, minimal, abstract, and kind of unlikely instrumentals. The likes of Billy Woods and Lucid, as well as Rock Marciano and Ka. And in a way, I see this instrumental shift happening in the New York underground as kind of a natural progression of hip-hop from the East Coast that still celebrates lyrics, giving audiences instrumentals that really spotlight the lyricist, give them a lot of space to work, as opposed to the current mainstream of pop rap and pop trap, where the instrumentals are so melodic, loud, and banging that they often drown out the MC at the center of all of it. So stripping back the beats more on this record definitely puts more of a focus on what Droog is saying, and it definitely works to prevent his style, prevent his lyrics from sounding all that dated or in the past. Having said that, though, I still think the bars on this album are some of the best Droog has spit so far in his career. Structurally, though, a lot of these tracks are kind of Flat, don't really have a whole lot of dimensions to them. In that respect, this album does leave a bit to be desired if you're looking for strong hooks or interesting beat switches. The fact that Droog, as a lyricist and as a rapper, is pretty compelling and as clever as ever does a lot to make up for that, as there are witty and mind-bending gems on pretty much every track here. And look, that's not to downplay the production, which I said before is kind of low-key, a little spaced out. The instrumentals are cool, but not overbearing. They're subtle, but still come off kind of eclectic. Like with the so opera organ leads and delayed vocal samples on the track RST. There's also a pretty cool implementation of a Sean Price sample on this track. Also the droning heavy bass and the phased guitar leads on the track World's About to End, which sounds like a super old dramatic fusion of funk and alternative rock, like something you would hear out of a verse on a, on a Rage Against the Machine song in the mid-90s. There's also the dusty vintage reed melodies on the track Babushka, where it sounds like Droog is having sampled some old incidental television music. The title of the song is a cute embrace of Droog's Eastern Bloc roots, as well as a, a nod to a bit of banter on the end of the song about how the track is like grandma appropriate. And speaking of grandmas, not only does Droog brag on this record about <laughs> sort of appealing to grandmas, uh, but also uh, a lot of the references on this thing are pretty dated. Not necessarily a bad thing, as it'll most likely play very well with the old head audience Droog has kind of attracted. But still, even with a lot of the vintage references on this thing, uh, the combinations of influences and, and nods, both musical and cultural, are pretty eclectic and unlikely. You have witty wordplay and bars that point directly to shock jocks Howard Stern and Don Imus, the film Trading Places, the experimental guitarist Buckethead, actress Lucy Lawless, the Hanna-Barbera cartoon character McGilla Gorilla, and the South Pole clothing brand. I mean, there's a bar in the opening track of this record where he literally says, my shorty looks straight off the... Heroes. Poster. Remember those? <laughs> 
This thing is like the hip-hop equivalent of a nostalgia-based comedy stand-up set. Remember this cultural reference? Remember this cultural reference? Whoa, whoa, whoa! The, the past is crazy. Droog is truly, 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 and honestly an old soul. And whether or not his nods and references go over your head because of your age, the one-liners and the lyrical tangents he goes on on this LP are really what sells this record. There are lines on here like, I don't know who's slicker, I do this, even when I'm under the weather, like a news ticker. Under the weather, like a news ticker. I'll shop when we win in. I've been plotting since last August. Got a leg up on him like dog piss. Then there's all the gorilla, baboon, primate, monkey references throughout the track RST that carry through the guest verses. It's actually a pretty smart way to bring a threaded theme throughout the song. Also, on the track On Tried by 13, Existential dread ain't nothing but a Rasta philosopher. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, man. Okay. Thinking it's all PG like Disney, you should see how nasty her pics are. Pixar. And look, th there's lots more where that came from. That is literally the tip of the lyrical iceberg when it comes to this album. If you want to be hit with bar after bar after bar, that'll have you like just hitting the rewind button and going back and listening to it over again so you get it because it's kind of like a weird, funny, hilarious, clever, lyrical Rubik's Cube, it, it, you know, this is it. Also, the guest features on this thing, for the most part, are fantastic. The first Makami guest verse is very good. MF Doom is fantastic on this thing. Wiki of Rat King fame is as smooth as ever. Also, Little Ugly Mane on the track where he's featured, where the beat switch comes in. He is absolutely twisted on his appearance on this record. Really, the only feature I didn't care for at all was the second and kind of unnecessary Makami feature. And it's kind of confusing, the drop in quality from the first one to the second second one on this same album, where he kicks the song off being barely even on the tempo to the point where it's so awkward it ruins the track. Not only that, but it sounds like he's rapping into a gamer headset microphone. I'm also kind of scratching my head at how rough the mix is on the track Chasing Ghosts featuring Rock Marciano, whose inclusion on this track I like quite a bit, but Droog is, is strangely mixed very low on this song to the point where he's kind of being drowned out in the beat. There's also the track Haunted House Beat toward the end of this record, which is literally like this overextended kind of eerie hip-hop instrumental with, I, I guess, some Halloween-inspired intentions. Really just an unnecessary interlude placed at a weird moment on the album. I also want to note before you yourself go into this LP to listen to it that uh, Droog is not necessarily the most politically correct rapper uh, in the game. It would seem that his uh, point of view and, and maybe even his politics come from the uh, same era that his references do in a lot of respects, as there is a point on this album where he raps about almost being tricked by a trans woman in a way that seems less tied to a specific experience and more just a function of perpetuating the stereotype that uh, trans women and trans people just exist to trick others into sleeping with them. And on the end of the track, World's About to End, there is this very extended clip from an episode of The Cosby Show that has become kind of infamous at this point where Bill Cosby is bragging about uh, his, his sauce, his barbecue sauce, which uh, apparently has the uh, power to uh, uh, turn people on. It's kind of an aphrodisiac. And of course, in light of the recent allegations against Bill Cosby, this portion of this episode of the show seems really, really weird. And Droog makes sure to, of course, set this vocal snippet to uh, some very dramatic and dark and, and unsettling music to just further push that reminder of Bill Cosby's history of sexual assault to the forefront of your mind. And whether or not you see the legitimately dark humor in, in what he's trying to do at this point on the record is, is really up to you. So even though Droog's style, his reference points, and even to a degree his outlook may be kind of dated or even a little dark. It's not like it's something that he hides from the listener as he raps on this very album. Play the alleys like a stray, never pet, sick puppy, it ain't get put down by a vet. So I like this record quite a bit. I think it's got a lot of great qualities to it, though it is a little inconsistent and kind of all over the place. It's a hodgepodge of sounds and ideas. It's a little rough around the edges to the point where I think it prevents this album from its full potential, but also I can't help but 
admit that it's also part of the appeal of this album to begin with. As there is kind of a thrill with listening to an album that feels like you are rifling through Droog's lyrical notebook and making note of all the cross-outs and rewrites and notes in the margins. So while there are a lot of moments on this record that I love, there's also a handful of cuts too that I felt were just a little messy, maybe underwhelming from a structure standpoint, could have used a stronger hook, more punch, or even more length. Lyrically though, I can't deny Droog has gotten better since his last album, and he's got the kind of talent that has made him one of the more magnetic MCs in the underground right now. A musician's musician in a way, which is why you see people like Rock Marciano as well as MF Doom so desperate to work with him on this record. One could also argue Droog is making some of the most interesting instrumental choices of his career so far too. And this album is very clearly a labor of love, but it is a kind of unfocused labor, and I think the many blemishes on this album do more more to add to Droog's character than it does necessarily this album's quality. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video for you to check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, your old Droog forever.